I get drunk on applause, so great. Uh, I'm a middle child after all. Like so, um, you were well. Thank you all so much for coming along. Um, and uh, it's a voice acting for tabletop role playing games uh, workshop. So we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, working with voice as a DM or as a player, and just adding that next level to your character. Okay, whether they're the big bad or they're the uh, your first character that you're just endeavouring to get a hands-on with. We're going to cover kind of three main areas and I really hope I leave time for questions and answers. Uh, I'm, I'm terrible in work. I count how many slides somebody has. I have 20. So if I'm on like slide 12 and we've eight minutes left, someone just tell me to shut up and get to the Q&A part and I will do that. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to be doing voice work at your table uh, and setting those parameters <coughs> in your session zeros. Uh, not everybody is comfortable doing character voices. How many people do character voices set around? Okay, about half the room. Um, the first time you do it, it tends to have a cringe factor. There is that like, oh, I'm about to do a goblin voice. Uh, Nobody knows what it sounds like. And suddenly it's, it, once it comes in and done, it's over. You get over that first hurdle and you're done, okay? Um, we're going to talk about the most important thing you'll be bringing to that, which is your own natural voice, okay? Uh, and working with that. And then tips and tricks that you can do to develop uh, your voice. Um, and then hopefully time for questions, and I may be able to possibly answer some as well. Uh, to give you kind of a, a quick introduction, I've been playing tabletop role-playing games for about 19 years, um, and easily 17 of that. Uh, is uh, as the dungeon master. Um, I have control issues, so I much prefer to meddle in people's lives than actually be, have my life meddled in. So um, I started uh, D8 Dungeon uh, about three years ago with uh, some really close friends. Four years ago, uh, it's just <laughs> such a fun experience, I'm forgetting myself. Um, and before that, I hadn't done much in the way of live streaming or, uh, or podcasting any of my material. Um, and then it suddenly came on me, do you know what? I'm just going to make a radio drama out of D&D, &D and I'm going to make characters fall in love with me. Um, and I'll have a successful romantic life that way. Uh, so <laughs> thus came Romancing the Dungeon, our first podcast series. Um, and very, very quickly, I realized that, oh, in the podcast, I sound the same whether I'm the lovable little side character or I'm the big bad. So I started to get comfortable with doing character voices and just allowing my players, but more importantly, listeners, to discern the difference uh, between who I'm currently voicing uh, and where we kind of go with it. For table manners and comfort levels, uh, do you have to be an accomplished or trained voice actor to do these things? No, I do it and I'm fine. Uh, so I am neither accomplished or trained. Um, but you don't need to go out and do uh, a, a very, very expensive course in voice acting to get this right. Okay? Um, you don't have to do voices at your table. This is something you should be doing at the very, very start of your games. Talking to your players, talking to your dungeon master. Some people aren't even comfortable talking as their character. They prefer to refer to what's happening in a third person sort of scenario. My character might say this, or I think my character is going to maybe address that and leave it at that. You find what you are comfortable with and what you want to bring to the table, okay? And having that frank, honest conversation, setting expectations and outlines for your players. And you'll note a lot of this is for your players because I'm always the DM, uh, because I choose to be, uh, not because I'm not allowed. Um, and, and yourself knowing realistically what you can do uh, as, a, as a dungeon master with, with, with voice work. And that session zero is going to be absolutely crucial to that. In your session zero, we talk about the story, we'll talk about themes, we'll talk about tone, we'll talk about lines and veils. Is everyone familiar with the concept of lines and veils and session zeros and stuff like that? Setting parameters for players and the dungeon master, things that we are comfortable playing with or talking about, engaging with, okay? Maybe you don't like gore. Maybe you don't like spiders. Maybe you don't like claustrophobic spaces. Maybe you don't like very political games. You outline those things at the session zero. You set your comfort boundaries. You should do the same thing with your performance and think about that performance, what you want to add to that space. 
When it comes to voice acting uh, or voice performing, the first step is the most important, and there's only two crucial steps, okay? You need to know what you sound like, <laughs> and you need to be comfortable in your own voice, okay? Um, for, the long <laughs> for the longest time, I thought I had a really deep, manly voice. Um, I was convinced I was basically like a 300 pound, six foot four Viking. Um, and then when I started answering the phone at home, people go, is that you, Helen? And I'm like, nope, I'll go get my mom. Uh, and yeah, very quickly, very quickly shut down. Uh, very, that idea of, although my mother is a 300 pound, six foot Viking. Um, but I, I wasn't comfortable with my voice for a very, very long time. Um, and I decided the best way to get over that was to go and study media studies and uh, do uh, radio program production and work in television and film. And I would make projects and I would get the same advice from teachers saying, you sounded really happy when you were doing the news. And I'm like, oh, thanks. There was a tsunami, a lot of people died. <laughs> well, I brought a bit of lightness to the thing. Um, Understanding what you sound like and getting comfortable with your voice is very, very important. And owning it. Like, I realise, I realise I don't have, I'm getting upset, I don't have this super deep, macho tone to my voice. But I really like my voice. Uh, I was at the Homebrew Quest uh, panel a couple of hours ago and they were talking about editing your work. And because we work in predominantly a podcast uh, situation with D8 Dungeon, half our stuff is podcast, half our stuff is live streamed. I have to listen to myself constantly. I love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> that might be arrogant, uh, but I actually, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I know what I sound like. And because I'm comfortable with it, I don't care if I have to sound a bit silly doing something else. I sound silly when I'm talking. I'm a teacher outside of playing Dungeons and Dragons, so I have to stand in front of a room of 18, 19, 20 year olds and talk a lot anyway. So the idea of not being comfortable with my voice comes with me. Do you know how to describe your own voice? Do you know what words you might use to, to, uh, to kind of sum up how you sound? And again, at the, I'm just gonna keep referring back to the home group because they did most of my work, so it's great, I'll just sit back. Uh, at the home group, uh, I think it was Wes said that you should make, and correct me if I was wrong, by the way, I don't know which one, <laughs> it was Wes. You should listen to yourself. And one of, the, one of the best ways of doing that is actually just record yourself. Take out your phone, uh, op grab your headset for your computer, and just record yourself reading a couple of lines. It can be from a book, it could be reading back homework, it could be reading back ingredients, it could be reading back, back of the toilet paper. It doesn't make a difference what you're reading. But record yourself and then listen to that. What do you notice about your voice? What, do you, what, can, you, what can you discern in, in terms of, have you a high-pitched voice? Do you speak quickly? Do you use a lot of ums and ers and ahs? Do you sound raspy? Do you sound young? Do you sound old? Do you sound serious? If you're not comfortable doing that, the other thing you could do is grab a mirror and, it sounds insane, talk to yourself. Don't do that in front of people, because that, <laughs> does make you look insane, uh, but take a mirror and just sit down in front of it and actually understand how you make that sound. What does your mouth look like as you are producing that sound? Do you, do you speak with a very, very closed jaw? Do you hold yourself upwards? Do you have a, a broad chest? Are your shoulders rolled back? All of these things have an impact on your voice. It's the thing to note when it comes to voice we understand it from a human point of view as, as two things. It is both a physiological thing that happens and a psychological thing. So there are things happening in your body, physically, that will change the way your voice sounds. And then psychologically, when people hear your voice, so you know when someone's cross, you know when somebody is upset, you know when somebody's sarcastic. They don't hold up a sign saying, I'm being sarcastic right now. Well, maybe they are, uh, sarcastically. But by and large, you're reading it from their tone. You're understanding it from their tone. So words that we can use to describe our voices, high, sarcastic, flat, accented, squeaky, low, strong, dry, breathy, quiet, young, nasally, 
all of these things are ways that we can, uh, we can come to understand ourselves. And none of those are, as far as I'm concerned, negative. Okay? None, none, of, those, none of those terms to use to describe your voice are negative. You just have to understand what it is you're working with. And that's, coincidentally, moving on to our next part, working with what you got. Once you understand what you know you sound like, there are things that you can do to help develop that, okay? I'm not gonna be able to change, I still sound like this 15 years later. You're not going to change the voice. You're not going to suddenly sound uh, like a completely different person. But there are things that you can do. There are exercises and warm-ups that you can do to help perfect that sound, to help work on that sound. And depending on what it is you're trying to do, so if you are setting up a, a podcast or a live stream, an actual play, working with your voice is going to be fundamental to that. Whether you're the player or the DM, you're going to be speaking a lot. And again, we speak very, very quickly. Um, this whole country speaks at, a, at about 3,000 words per minute. Great for us. We, we, all, we, we have that ability to catch up very, very quickly. But if your audience is in the States, or your audience is in France, or your audience is in Australia, or wherever it might be, they don't generally speak uh, with the same pace that we speak with. So they might not catch on how quickly uh, or quickly to what you are actually trying to say. So working uh, on vocal exercises is a really, really good step. And tongue twisters are, are one of my favorite uh, exercises that you can do. Um, so the poor old bloke spoke old broken orc. And tongue twisters really, really help. They, they, we tended to assume them as working on pronunciation. Okay, if you, if you do tongue twisters, it helps with pronunciation. It also will improve the clarity with which you speak. Okay, so knowing how to pronounce the word, great. But the confidence that comes in that will form clarity in how you actually speak. So many mumbling minotaurs are making merry music in the moonlight and mighty mice. They're a useful tool for just sounding, okay? Anybody want to take the third one for me? Teach the tiny teething tieflings heave ha 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 the Yeah. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone want to take the last one? I'm not doing that last one. Uh, <laughs> the elephants thinly little lit with the little lizards. Yeah, it's the more, and you don't, you don't just do a tongue twister once, by the way, and go, nailed it, I got it. <laughs> Job done, I'm now a voice actor. Thank you very much, Laura Bailey, get out of the way. Um, no. Uh, you, you do these over and over and over again. And with that comes that ability to help shape the word. Because they, they're called a tongue twister for a reason, because if you become aware of what's happening as you say it, the weirdest thing is, how often do you think about your own tongue? Right now. Yeah, right now you just did. Yeah. <laughs> But you don't, you, you don't, you, no one's sitting there going, God, my tongue feels great today. Uh, no. Also, you wouldn't say that out loud, that's a bit weird. Uh, ignore me, I'm allowed to say it. Um, but as you do tongue twisters, developing that awareness of what is actually happening, what am I stumbling on? Where is the word getting caught? And working back on it. And that is really going to help. So teach the teeny thieving tiefling heave half a hefty halfling. With the tongue twister, we have an awful a tendency to go, well, it's a tongue twister, so I have to say it fast, because if I say it fast, then I've done it well. Nobody said you to say it fast. Say it at a rhythm that works for you, and then build on that rhythm. I still won't do that last one, don't make me. Uh, okay? So, okay, you don't like, or you're struggling with tongue twisters. Here's a couple of things that we all do regularly, okay? I hope. Hopefully you're all breathing. Hopefully this isn't just a <laughs> very weird... Um, I think athletes are prone to warming up before they go for like a match or something, a match. <laughs> well, I've just shot myself in the foot. Uh, a race or a swim, whatever it might be, okay? <laughs> you have to do the same thing with your voice. If you're going to, um, if you're going to be running a podcasted series, so from my own experience with Romancing the Dungeon, 
we tend to record uh, record on Saturdays and Sundays and I would then have to go in to teach classes on a Monday to Friday and there have been times where I have not done vocal warm-ups and I have a character who shall remain nameless uh, who is somewhat raspy somewhat older somewhat fuller <laughs> somewhat beautiful and gorgeous some people say um, but she speaks with a very very scratchy voice and I didn't do the warm-ups beforehand I didn't do any preparation I didn't give myself the time to work with what I had went into class on the Monday sounding exactly like her <laughs> unintentionally trying to teach people about English teaching people English literature and speaking about Sylvia Plath well you sound a bit like this isn't really going to have the effect that you want it to. Um, it was a very, very strange class. Uh, I think it worked with them. But for us, for, for, for long form, because uh, we, we, don't, we don't play a, a two-hour session or a three-hour session, we will usually start recording around uh, 11 a.m. and we will finish recording around 9 p.m. So now there is breaks in the middle. I'm not awful. Like, I, I, I let them go to the bathroom and have food. Uh, if they win D and D, otherwise we keep going. Um, but by and large, that's a huge amount of time to be working uh, with your voice and to be using your voice as the as the DM or as a player. It doesn't make a difference. You're going to be using your voice for all of that time. You are going to end up with uh, a, a worse kind of a quenched throat or a kind of a scratchy throat. But you could end up with a sore throat. Okay, you could end up even damaging your voice or losing your voice, um, which would have been a great way to get a class out, but no, I had to go in and sound exactly like we did. <coughs> when it comes to one of the first things or one of the best warm-ups that you can do to get that going is actually, and it, it's also counterproductive, when you tell people to relax, no one actually relaxes. People suddenly kind of go, okay, I'll just, I'll just start doing yoga there by Gwyneth Paltrow and away I go and I know exactly how to relax now. Relaxing your face. Actually, and it's strange, and I'm not going to do it because you're all looking at me. I am not going to start making weird faces. Well, I'm doing those now. But actually scrunching your face, doing things that might, again, look a bit mad. Uh, rolling your jaw, doing huge yawns, blinking fast are all ways of actually just warming up the muscles in your face. Okay? And if you've ever had to do an awful lot of talking for a long period of time, you'll often find that the jaw can be quite sore. Okay? In the same way, apparently, when you go running or you lift weights, your body gets sore. I've yet to try any of those activities. <laughs> uh, but having spoken at length a lot, I have walked away with a sore jaw. Okay? And not just because the players got aggro and hit me. Uh, <laughs> but rolling, rolling your face, allowing yourself that room to actually work with what you have. <laughs> Taking deep breaths, yawning. And it, it is one of those favorite, yep, it's one of those things. We, when we yawn, we, we relax. Your whole body relaxes. Um, I don't know how true it is. Someone once told me that the reason we all, when we see one person yawn and everybody else yawns, apparently it's a reflexive thing and it's that you're worried that person is sucking up more oxygen than you are. Uh, so you start to suck up the oxygen. So every time I yawn, I'm like, that's my oxygen. <laughs> Leave it with me. Humming uh, is a great way of warming up your voice, okay? And I am not a singer, okay? As wonderful and as sweet and as dulcet tones of my voice there are, I can't sing. I've never been able to do it. Uh, I sang on stream once, and I, it was one of those things where I was like, that's it, packing it in, never doing it again. Wrote the song and everything. I think it was about eight lines. I almost died. Uh, <laughs> it was a weird song about a priest who fell in love with a spider. It was... Beautiful. And then he ate her, uh, or he, uh, he, no, she ate him, no, other around, obviously. Uh, yeah, no, it, was, it wasn't great. But humming, finding, finding that natural frequency. I'm not telling you, you know, to go and find a particular note or anything. Just find something that you naturally is comfortable to your voice. And then allowing yourself, and when you hum, go a little higher, go a little lower each time. And that is a great way of actually warming up vocal cords. So for doing those extended sessions or getting into that character's kind of space, it really is a good step to working with that voice. So you've warmed up, you know what you sound like. What the hell do you do next? Um, the next thing to do is, and this is the other important step, to remember that your voice is unique. 
okay? Except me and my mother, we have the exact same voice. Uh, <laughs> your voice is unique to you, okay? And if that's the voice you want to bring to your character, bring that voice to that character. There is no pressure to perform high or low, to work outside of that space, to work outside of what you have. Find what you are comfortable with. The other thing to remember is there is absolutely no such thing as a bad voice. It's in entirely subjective. You might be sitting there going, God, he has a really annoying voice. That's fine. That's, that's your opinion. You've hurt my feelings. But that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> getting, used, getting used to it, getting comfortable with that, and knowing that I am not... God, I do terrible accents. I, have, I owe France an apology <laughs> for what I've done to the French accent, okay? Um, but I don't care. I, like, oh, not, not, no, not, 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 no, 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 <laughs> Care about the French people. I'm comfortable making a buffoon of myself. <laughs> For the French. <laughs> Through French. Uh, but understanding, okay, understanding that uh, if, it, if it's, if it's a, I, okay, confession time. Got into all of this in college because I went into the drama society. And I play, I was in a little play called The Plough and Stars, and I had a tiny, tiny little part. And I think I only got cast in it because I'm quite a short little fella. Uh, but I got cast as Sergeant Tinley of the Wiltshires, who is from East London and has a Cockney accent. And unfortunately for us, <laughs> it's not with my repertoire, but fortunately for us, the, there was a, uh, another production of the same play on in the Gaiety Theatre. And they thought, wouldn't it be a lark to come out and look at the students doing the same play? <laughs> and at the very end of the production, I was given an award. And I was like, oh, that's an award for acting, thanks. Uh, Merle Streep, here I come. Um, I was given an award for best worst accent uh, oh. by the guy whose character I played. Uh, <laughs> and his response to that was, I didn't know the character was from Sydney. And I was like... <laughs> You didn't read the material, my friend. Uh, so I, I just thought it, it was funny. Like, I, obviously, the play is not funny. It's not a comedy. <laughs> it is when I'm in it. Uh, but getting, getting used to what you work with and what that voice sounds like is crucial, OK? You won't do a bad voice because it's a voice that you were doing, OK? What's important to note is what makes, what makes it a, a struggle is consistency. So when you're coming up with a voice for a character, one of the crucial things to remember is if this campaign is, if it's a one shot, okay, if we're just doing it for a one off thing, great, I can forget about that voice down the line. If we're doing it for three months, six months, four years, you gotta hold that voice for that time, okay? You, you, you could just say that they got bopped on the head and suddenly they sound like they're from Sydney, Australia, but your DM has to work that into the narrative somehow. Consistency is what's key. So if it's a, a very bad French accent, lean into it, keep it going, okay? And just work, keep at it. That's the, that's the important, that consistency. If it's a bad or a weird sounding voice, it won't break the immersion because that's just what the character sounds like. But if you're going in and out of it, that's where people start to struggle and for us, with the, with the live stream or with the, the podcast, I'm fortunate I can just listen back to what I've recorded and go, oh yeah, yeah, that was the terrible accent I did. Um, I'll just find that again. I'll find that again and away we go with it. And it does, it does help that we have that as a piece. But it's the same for yourselves, even if it's just for a home game. When you find the character's voice that you want to work with, record it, hang on to it, and then just listen back to it for a couple of times beforehand. And again, if you aren't comfortable with that, the other thing to remember is that voice is sound, but there's so much more to what we do with our voice than just the sound it makes. Mannerisms and expressions. So pauses, a whistling breath, being airy in your performance all change how you sound, and they give your character a unique voice at the table. I have a tendency to speak quite quickly. I am highly caffeinated today, so that's not helping. But if I was to start slowing myself down, this is not how I naturally speak. 
caffeine or no caffeine, I tend to be, this is how I usually speak. This is the voice that which I normally use constantly. Pity my poor students. Um, that's why we use PowerPoint. Um, but those small things that you can do change your voice. They lend to the character. Changing pace, speaking slower or faster is a great way of conveying even emotion. The idea of playing a young, energetic, young cleric, speak quicker, add a little pep. Everybody knows young people are enthusiastic and full of hope. Okay. <laughs> Lean into that. Okay. That gets knocked out of you like two years into the campaign. Then you become hardened and wizened. Uh, working on uh, an arrogant and dominating uh, BBEG, uh, slow it down. Make that monologue torturous. Every single syllable, phonem, all of it, hit every single note. I have you captured. There is nothing you can do except listen to me. Sucks to be you. Because <laughs> I've prepared a speech. Uh, I'm about to reveal my plan. Um, make them listen to you. You don't have to go high, you don't have to go low, you can just slow it all down. That has impact. Consider your body language. Consider your character's body language. How are you holding yourself? I tend to speak a lot with my hands. Uh, doing talks as a DM, awful when there's a microphone about this far from your face and you're waving your hands around. Um, so I have to usually have them tied behind my back. Uh, but how does your character hold themselves? Are they confident? Confident people usually don't sit in on themselves. They sit upright. The chest and shoulders are broad, open. So think, think about what happens physically as you speak. Sarca I keep leading to sarcasm. It is actually one of my favorite emotional tones to go with. But sarcasm, a great visual cue. I hear it muffling at the background there. Uh, those are my players. Ignore them. Uh, they will be defeated. Uh, Sarcasm, you roll your eyes. It is that, ugh. That simple action helps communicate. And whether you're on a live stream or you're playing with friends or you're recording for a podcast, that simple rolling of the eyes does have impact on your voice. Speaking as a shy character, a reserved character, a quiet character, someone who's maybe it's their first foray into the, the world of mortals, whatever it might be. Maybe they grew up uh, in a monastery and didn't really know the outside world and they're a little bit nervous about everything. But we tend to bunch up when we're nervous. We tend to kind of maybe look down. We don't make a lot of eye contact. So even physically turning our head, not great for the microphone, just as an FYI for any of the tech people in the room. I know you shouldn't not, look to, not talk to the mic, but you can not talk to the mic and talk to the mic at the same time. There's a way of doing it. Uh, you just take it off the and you hold on to it. But <laughs> directing literally directing yourself away from people, not making eye contact, is a great way of conveying that character without having to necessarily change how you want to, to do it. One of the things that I really wanted to uh, kind of hone in on was how do you find characters' voices? Okay? How do you, how do you decide what they sound like? And the, the answer to that, and I, I, I spent a whole eight minutes thinking about it. Uh, the answer, that's on brand. Uh, the answer to that is, there's no, there is no immediate answer to it. You can be a high-born elf and still sound like you're from the south. You can, there's, nobody says you have to, nobody says it has to sound a certain way. You get to decide that, okay? you get to lean into whatever it is that you want to bring to that character and their identity and their personality. The important thing is that you give yourself time and space. You will let yourself figure it out, okay? You have that conversation with the DM. You have the conversation with the players around you. You, you figure out where it is, where you're going to go from. One of the, one of the best uh, tips I can give you is to look at, to look at voices, to look at voices, to listen to voices, no, just look at them, uh, listen to voices uh, that you like, okay? And I, you don't have to now, I'm not telling you to go watch all of Critical Role and just 
rip off Travis William. Uh, where you go, just do voice, just do his voice for everything. Look at your favorite singers, favorite characters in video games, favorite characters in TV shows, favorite actors, favorite personalities or entertainers. Everybody has a different voice. Everybody speaks very, very differently. But mimicking or taking elements from what they do is a great starting point. And some of the, the characters that I've brought to life and then maimed their accents with, I draw from things, I draw from characters, I draw from personalities that I've met. One of them is based on my grandmother. Um, <laughs> literally. Even the swearing. Um, Nana loved to swear a lot. Uh, so, really she did. Um, but we focus, we, we have a tendency to kind of look at well, if I'm watching Critical Role or, 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 or I'm listening to the Adventure Zone or Dungeons and Daddies, well, they're really good at these things and they're really, yeah, because they're doing it a really long time and that's their job. But it's a, it, it makes perfect sense. They're doing it a long time. This takes practice. You're not, um, and, and if you are a prodigy, Let's talk afterwards. <laughs> I want to steal what you do um, and then put it into my PowerPoint. Uh, but this takes practice. This isn't something that you will just do. Uh, you're not going to, by the way, <laughs> just in case I missold this, you will not leave your uh, fully trained voice actor. Um, <laughs> I will not be available for references afterwards. Okay? I will be changing my name. Uh, but you have, to, you have to give yourself time. You have to give yourself credit. And you have to be patient with it. That's, that's, that's the crucial side of it. And you're, you're going to make mistakes. And you're going to uh, feel silly or stupid. Or you might feel embarrassed. That goes away. That, that does. It just, with, it, with practice and doing it and repeating it, th those things go away. Some of the characters uh, that I've drawn influence from and these are, for the record, these are voices I still do. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a range. Um, <laughs> one of them is French. Um, so <laughs> you can blame that video game for that. For, but I, it's not that I'm trying to be these characters or have those voices. But oftentimes what I will end up doing is I will listen to them. I will listen to how that character is... Um, how they sound, what, what kind of words do they use? Do they, do they use big words or do they draw out uh, certain syllables? Are they a bit hissy? All of those things then I'll then take and go, okay, I'm working on this kind of character. I'm working on this uh, angle. That really reminds me of a certain character. I will lean into that. And uh, hopefully everybody is familiar with most of these characters or I'm showing my age. But <laughs> Roz from Monsters, Inc. Uh, is a huge inspiration to me, um, <laughs> both in D&D and in real life. Uh, <laughs> I was a bureaucrat for a while. Um, but I, to the point that even that character I mentioned at the very, very start is called Rosalinda. Um, I took Roz's name and I added Anna Linda to it to make her sound fancier. Um, and she is a big, curvaceous, loud, obnoxious, slightly old Tabassi uh, who runs a matchmaking service, uh, trying to set heroes up with other heroes. Um, so when I try to, when I, when I, if we haven't played for a while, and every episode, Roz is in it. Roz, because she's the star. The others are just there hanging on. Uh, <laughs> Roz is the star of that podcast. Everyone knows it. Um, but we might not play for four weeks. You might not play for five weeks. One of the first things I will do is I will start to... I will try to remember, well, what, did, what does the character Roz from Monsters, Inc. sound like? And I always... And that's the first... And my players will tell you, I will literally say the same quote at the table and always get to be there. It's like... Always watching you, Mike Wazowski. Always watching. That's my base. I start straight there and I'm like, okay, now get to Roz. Find Roz. And then suddenly it's like, welcome to Romancing the Dungeon. I'm Roz Graypurse, founder, CEO, and love wizard. 
and straight away I have my jumping off platform. And all of these characters I have butchered, okay? <laughs> Happily. Because I don't want to sound like Tommy Pickles. I don't want to sound like Rhea Perlman. I don't want to sound like Alexa Shit from Schitt's Creek. But I take certain parts of how they hold themselves and I try to carry them into my performances. Nicole Collard is the one responsible for how bad I am at French accents, I blame her, and the Broken Sword trilogy, okay. I just answered that question just in case that was going to be a question, so I just <laughs> cut that right off straight away, okay. You can blame the Broken Sword games. Uh, are there any questions, uh, or does anybody have any comments? Does anyone disagree? Yeah? What's your worst accent then? Can you do it? Oh. <laughs> oh, my friend, all my accents are terrible. Um, you can relate to that. You can totally relate to that. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I once tried to do, again, I might be showing my age here, um, and I'd need to play the clip to find it, but, and again, I think I might get it. It's not, yeah, it was Nadine, wasn't it? It was Nadine Coyle. Uh, oh, yes! And the, yes! Pa and the passport issue, yes. and Meme. I go, I, I, I will... I butcher the Northern Irish accent. It comes off as slightly Jamaican. I have no idea how. Um, and you'd think I'd be good at it because I have cousins up there and I would spend summers up there, but no, it comes off slightly Jamaican uh, by way of Belfast. Uh, so I, and the thing is, I'm just leaning into it. I, it might be terrible, but my character is not from Belfast. My character is from the city of Gaelshire. And, Guess what? That's what they all sound like in Gilshire. <laughs> that's that region's accent. So that's the joy of homebrewing everything. Um, anybody else? Yeah. Uh, when you're running the game, how do you handle switching between? Oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> or do you? <laughs> oh, I lean into that heavily. Uh, I have flirted with myself <laughs> as an elderly gnome woman running a dive bar and a surly uh, businessman uh, dwarf from the deep south. And one, I'm very good at seducing myself. <laughs> it almost worked, I almost had an affair. <laughs> I, it, I take a pause. I, I, I take a pause, because it is that thing of, and even if I wasn't doing a voice, I'm still going from two different characters, two different personalities. So I take a pause, and, and I will laugh. Like, that's the thing, I have fun with it. That's, because if, 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 you, if you can laugh at it and laugh at yourself, then if everybody else is laughing, then it, hopefully it's funny and they're not being mean. <laughs> but I just, that's the way I kind of approach it. I, it from, a, from a technique point of view, I pause as I go from one character to the other. That it does, it's still very weird, uh, but I'm comfortable with it. And I'm, I'm, hopefully my players are comfortable with it. Although the flirting did get, they egged me on as well, so <laughs> they really, really did. Yeah, sorry. Oh, um, I was just wondering like, if, say, when you're trying like an accent and certain accents do tend to shift, do you have any advice for like, I don't know, centering or grounding yourself in what you're trying to do rather than go from Cockney to Australian or whatever the pipeline Oh God, is? who would do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so one of the, one of the best things uh, that I can uh, suggest doing is trying to engage with material in that accent. Now I'm not telling you to go and listen to a truck or watch a truck ton of EastEnders, but finding clips on, on YouTube and listening to what that kind of sounds like before the session. Not don't do it mid-session, but don't do it as you're playing. Sorry, I'm just wondering what's happening now in EastEnders, it's great. Um, but, Getting yourself into that mindset, if, if you're going to base your character on a character like Tommy Pickles, um, and again, I'm, I'm 37, and I play a four-year-old orc girl called Ike, um, and she's phenomenal. She's like a local terrorist in the city of Tesla. <laughs> well, she thinks she is. Uh, she also now owns the dive bar. That's not a spoiler. She owns the dive bar with her, little bro with her older brother. Um, and to go from this to like a child's voice, um, again, I will just throw on an episode of Rugrats, and that helps me get into that. Can we hear your child's voice? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> let me see if I can do Ike. Um, hi guys, it's me, Ike. Um, I'm running the Copper Rabbit, and uh, if you all come down right now, I will give you two silver pieces off of the entry. Entry <laughs> is still one gold piece. <laughs> Pay me. Um, um, and when, again, 
physically, I, I, I went straight down. I, I tried to make myself feel a little, not that I'm a giant, but I tried, oh, I am that Viking. I tried, to, I tried to sink into myself, but Ike is this brazen little orc girl uh, who terrorizes the local gangs so she can set up her own gang. Um, she's confident, she's brazen, and her older brother is a human and is a total dweeb. Uh, like, he's scared of everything. But when it comes to his little sister, he's mad protective of her. Um, and shifting between their voices, um, I go from mindset. Orc, uh, Ike will go uh, hell for leather for everything, whereas uh, her brother, not so much. So I will go, I will start to kind of be, um, well, Ike, I, uh, oh, um, well, I don't think we should really be going in there, Ike, because, you know, that says over 18s, um, and I'm seven and you're four, so straight away you just lean into, and, like, being nervous, like, finding nervous is easy. I'm nervous all the time. I'm anxious right now, sitting in front of all of you. You lean into, uh, lean into those emotions. They're, they're there for a reason, and they help, they come across in your voice in a big, big way. Anybody else? Like I said, I'm not good at it. Uh, like I, I'm just here to give you some tips and tricks. Yeah. <laughs> if you're maybe halfway through a session or even a quarter in and you're just not feeling the voice, what, how would you reckon, recommend tackling that being like, it's just not working? Oh, again, uh, it has happened. Uh, we, reached, we did a, a, a fan outreach thing to kind of design an NPC and uh, right down to like race and class and then like hit me with an accent uh let's see what i can do someone specifically asked that i try do jamaican it well, not, not only was it bad it was just an awful stereotype and i literally turned around to the team and i went i'm not comfortable doing this like that was terrible and i owe all of jamaica an apology uh <laughs> so i wrote a letter uh i just stopped and i literally said I'm not comfortable with it. It's not actually. That's where the Nadine Coyle uh, voice <laughs> came up by way of Jamaica. Uh, I just, I just stopped, and we had that conversation, and it was like, I know this is something that the community said to try. I can't do it, and I'm not comfortable doing it. So I just, I'm not going to do it. And again, it came down to, and it wasn't our session zero. I think this was, was it the start of season two. I think we were, we were doing this. It was season one library. Oh yes, it was a librarian, <laughs> a Jamaican librarian, uh, who was a furbolg, I think, um, and I just couldn't. I I I couldn't. I couldn't do the accent right. Uh, I couldn't do it properly, and I didn't want to stereotype the accent. Uh, way more comfortable stereotyping the French accent. Everyone does that. Uh, uh, I just wasn't comfortable with it, and we had a conversation at the table. And I went, "Can we just stop?" Uh, and if anyone who listens to it is like, "Hey," That furrowed librarian was supposed to be Jamaican. I'm like, that is my Jamaican accent, by way of Derry. Uh, so uh, enjoy it. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it. Okay. And that comfort can be physically. It's hurting my voice to do. Like doing Ros Vapers' voice hurts my throat. Like it's so scratchy. It's so raspy. And doing it for extended uh, uh, periods is not ideal. And uh, if that starts to happen, we will take a break. But if I'm not comfortable with the character's voice that I've come up with or the fans have asked me to do, then I just won't do it. Because I, I don't want to, I don't, one, I don't want to be offensive. And I, again, all my accents are terribly offensive. But I, I don't want to go out of my way um, to, to make people listening uncomfortable to it either. Like, so having that conversation with your table, whether it's a session zero or halfway through the campaign, like, look, it's just not working for me. Or is everybody okay? A lot easier at a home game. But, hey, it's, it's, even though it's a stream, even though it's a podcast, it's still your game. It's still your table. And if someone in chat goes, hey, that character sounded like they were from Scotland like last week, and now they don't. What's that about? Um, I shoot fireballs out of my hand, and, <laughs> and I have a tail. And you have an issue with the fact that I don't have a Scottish accent anymore. That's, and, and that might be a bit... Facetious, but eh. it's your, again, it's your game, it's your table. You get to set the, the tone for it the whole way through. Anybody else? Yeah. What kind of advice would you have for like mixing how to do like your warm ups and your voice acting techniques with like mic discipline generally when you have people are recording either for live streams or for podcasts? 
so again with uh, with our with the pod- I think the podcast might, might, might be the best example because with our with our stream on Twitch everybody has a different setup uh, so sorry tech people um, <laughs> we go for good sound but everybody has a different type of microphone uh, some people might even try Bluetooth it um, but for our for our setup for the podcast um, we have uh, we always have a conversation right at the very, very start. Um, and we, we talk a little bit about like, okay, remember, we're having fun. Uh, this is our Dean D game that we edit and put out there uh, afterwards. But because it's going out there, you have to be mindful that an audience has to be able to listen to this. And when one of our big things is, because we're so funny, uh, we laugh all the time. Um, but when we laugh, Okay, naturally, we get louder, okay? And our big thing is, hey, if you're gonna start laughing, do your best to lean away from the mic. Uh, put a little, no, we don't always remember, and I have to edit that, or Louise has to edit that. And I just cut it, just cut the laughter. We'll put in canned stuff afterwards, it'll be fine. <laughs> but we, those small, those few small bits and pieces, it's just being aware that there is a microphone there and they're sensitive pieces of equipment. Um, and, Good, good mic etiquette is, uh, again, small things like, uh, now, they're in the room and I don't want to like give out to them, but we have a fire ganassi on the Romancing the Dungeon cast who used to date the half-elf bard also on the cast, not in real life, uh, obviously, uh, but in the, in the game, and she really hates him. Uh, he ghosted her. He broke up with her. She hates him. She hate obviously with it. With, you know, it's justified. But one thing we noticed very, very uh, about halfway into our recording sessions for the first season was that particular player. Whenever the half elf barge would try and do something or say something, would mutter, "Douchebag" or whatever, <laughs> really quietly into the microphone. And we were like, do we cut that? Do we? Because again, it's not the Ganassi scene; it's not their moment. But for us, it made perfect sense. So we left it in, obviously. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. Um, but uh, in the home request, uh, there was uh, the the talk. There was mention of like cross talking. And fine when it's not being recorded. Fine when it's not being live streamed. But when you go to edit that after the fact and you have five players and the DM or a DM and four players and people are just talking over each other, it's impossible to edit it. So we always, and again, it's natural, eye contact. Uh, again, the microphone is there, they're picking everything up. But when it's, I'm not going, I'm, I don't have a red light, uh, green light scenario where it's like, I've just gone and I'm finished talking, now it's your turn over. We don't, but we're using body language, we're using eye contact to help kind of like, you know. <laughs> not get my body contact here, <laughs> but we, we, use, we use eye contact, we use body language to really help communicate, take over, take over, I'm done, I've, I've said my witty thing, take over, um, um, and back and forth. We've, we're quite, um, and again, this was everybody around that table it was our first attempt, it was our first endeavor at this. And again, some of us have done amateur acting. We have, we now have two actors at the table. Um, and we outshine them, but we have two actors at the table. And it's always that thing of play to the strengths. And we, at the very, very start, we would ask Sam, look, is there things that we could do to warm up as a, as a group? And if we were going into heavy sessions or anything like that, like, is there, things that we should be doing or talking about. We even just play improv games. Um, nowadays, it's just we sit around and we talk. We'll sit at the table and we just start chatting. I'm recording. I, it's just I've got all of you. I've got dirt on all of you. Uh, <laughs> but we've, we just start recording. And when we find, kind of, OK, everybody feels kind of warmed up. We've kind of got all that out of our system. Let's just start. Let's just start rolling. And then we can chop all of that extra stuff out. But the again it's getting familiar like the first couple of sessions and if you i was about to say if you listen to the first few episodes we're, we sound crap but we don't we're fine it's okay but we didn't we weren't experts um but 
we learned, and, and I hope uh, I've got five minutes. Uh, I will move those five minutes. Uh, but we've um, we've hopefully we've hopefully gotten uh, a good deal better, and we've we you get an awareness as you are uh, as you're using that equipment. Uh, it's just you can't ignore the camera in the room. You can't ignore the microphone. So it's there. Just let it sit there. And also, don't tap on the table. Don't roll unnecessary dice. Uh, just reiterating these things again for one or two people that might be in the cast. Uh, just stressing, <laughs> stressing those things. Makes editing painful. Um, any other last minute questions or anything else anyone wants to cover? Okay. So, <coughs> shameless plug. Because uh, unlike the homebrew quest, I will blag myself. No, I won't. Uh, uh, also, don't like promoting. Um, but uh, if you had questions, maybe you weren't, uh, you didn't want to ask in front of everybody, or you were around later on. I am running a, a game at, s I think the last sessions are six. Okay, so I'm running, I'm running a, a game at six o'clock, but I'm here for the evening. Uh, so if you see me about and you have questions or you want to ask, just stop. Uh, outside of voice acting and stuff for that, I'm very, very interested in narrative design and writing stories, uh, and I love helping people figure out angles for. Uh, where your story might go or your arc might go. I love chatting to people about their campaigns uh, and then throwing a spanner in the works. Because uh, <laughs> people do this all the time. So if you, and if you're not, you can find me on social media at the Dova, or at Dova Queen. Someone has the original title, so I have threes in my name. Uh, if you're in the room, I will give you 50 quid to swap. Uh, I really just want to be the Dova Queen on Twitter, uh, not the Dova Q33. Um, <laughs> You can find D8 Dungeon on all social media channels at D8 Dungeon, okay? Uh, <clears throat> for anyone that's under the age of like 16, you probably want to avoid romancing the dungeon. Uh, <laughs> or your parents are going to send us very angry uh, emails. Um, we are PG-13. Ish. Uh, we're like a Hallmark movie. Um, it, the camera will always pan to the fireplace or fade to black. Uh, Okay, I promise. Uh, <laughs> unless it's Dwarf and the Gnome, in which case I go into huge detail. <laughs> it's, it's, it's me and me again. Um, we put out a brand new episode of Romancing the Dungeon uh, every second Friday. Uh, we are into, we're well into season two. Uh, we have to record the goddamn finale. Uh, we're on a, we've enough content to bring us right up to July. So it's a great place to jump onto. But uh, a member of our team recently, himself and his wife, had a baby, so we're kind of been inconvenienced. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they practically raised themselves. Uh, um, and then on twitch.tv forward slash d8 dungeon, uh, we have regular streams. So every second Monday, uh, there is a show called Rise of the Forsaken. And uh, again, both, both Romance London and Rise of the Forsaken are set in homebrew worlds. I just, it's easier to make stuff up. Because if you have to change stuff on the fly, no one can give out to you. Um, <laughs> and if they do, just ignore it. Uh, we have two new shows starting um, very, very soon. We have Ballad of the Mad Kings, which is a prequel series to Rise of the Forsaken. Because again, that player who had the baby is also in that campaign. <laughs> so that baby owes me two shows. Um, <laughs> And we have uh, a brand new series called Random DMs, where we play established adventures. And I force myself not to homebrew anything. Um, I'm going to be very uncomfortable. Uh, but every, every episode, uh, we roll a dice to determine which of the five of us is going to DM the session. Oh, wow. So we're all, we're all going to be playing older adventurers who relive their youth and their campaigns. Uh, and then every session, a D4 gets rolled and a new DM is selected out of the group of us uh, to take over. Uh, that's starting on March 16th. And uh, it's a mix of both Irish and UK uh, tabletop role-playing gamers uh, coming together to start off this series. Uh, we are always mad to collaborate with uh, other creators, other people out there. We have a very, very active Discord community. And the last thing to mention is in July, every year, we organize a charity event called the D8 Dungeon Drive, where we raise money for various different causes, both in Ireland and abroad. We are always looking for DMs and game masters. 
but we're always in need of players. Uh, so if you're happy to um, play a game in a random system with a random dungeon master for a charity, uh, you are more than welcome to, to sign up. And the best place to keep up to date with all of our activities, like I said, follow D8 Dungeon on Twitter and Instagram and hop on over to our Discord. I will shut up, I'm done. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you.